Hello, one last video in this introduction to 3D uh, coordinate system. We want to look at spheres now. We know about circles, but what about spheres? And so, remember the equation of a circle generically centered at hk and has a radius of r. You go x minus h quantity squared and y minus k quantity squared. Those two guys added up to equal r squared. So what are you going to do for a sphere? The three to Dimensional analog of that? Well, HK, you should use L next, but L looks too much like a one, so I'm just gonna use M. So the center of this circle, a sphere, sorry, is HKM. And the radius is still the square root of the right hand side. The radius is R. Alright, so let's do some work with what if I give you a center and I give you a radius? Find the equation of the circle. It's almost too easy. Plug into the formula. Who's H? Who's K? Who's M? Who's R? Plug them in. Too easy, right? You have X minus nothing squared. Y minus minus three squared. Z minus six quantity squared equal to, now be careful, it's root three who's squared. So three. That's too easy. That's, I'll never ask you that. Don't worry. It's too easy. Here's a hard question. Well, not really hard. Just a little bit of algebra. Let's say we have an equation and we want to backtrack and find the center and the radius. Not in the standard form, though. It'd be too easy. How about in a multiplied out form? 4x squared plus 4y squared plus 4z squared minus 4x plus 8y minus 3 and equal to 0. How's that going to work? What's the difference between what you have and what you want? What you want is the format. Quantity squared, quantity squared, quantity squared, quantity squared. How do you get the quantity squared? You're going to have to complete the square. All right, how do you complete the square? Well, you want to set aside the x's and set aside the y's, set aside the z's. So let's push in some space, space things out. We're going to have to add something to both sides. Okay. So 4x squared minus the 4x plus a blank space. 4y squared plus the 8y plus a blank space. 4z squared, there's no z, so leave it. That's already a perfect square. Equals to move the 3 over to the other side and then the two blank spaces to balance out the two blank spaces that are on the left. Now, what makes completing the square difficult is when the coefficient on the squared term is not a 1. A little bit difficult. Not undoable, but difficult. Why? You have to factor that coefficient out. And so the 4, who's in front of x squared and y squared and z squared, that 4 needs to be factored out. So let's do it. The issue comes in trying to remember that that 4 is out there and then being able to make sure you put the right thing as you're adding to both sides. Okay. So we introduce these parentheses and these parentheses are going to become perfect squares by adding the perfect number. What's the number that's going to make it a perfect square? What's the relationship between the coefficient on X, the guy who's inside the perfect square, the guys who's in the blank space, complete the square. Keep the four on the outside. What you do is you take half of the coefficient on X and that's the guy who's in the perfect square with the X. So half of one is just a half. So we take the half of one and we have to square. It. We take the half of the two in front of the y and we have to square it. Half of two is one. And so here's our perfect squares. Um, I haven't told you why that's an eight yet. Sorry about that. That eight shouldn't have been there. Sorry about that. Um, so let's backtrack. Let's backtrack. I should use colors, but I don't. Darn. Um, so you take half of one. And you get a half, and then you square, and you get a fourth. You take half of two and get a one, square it, and you get a one. But you are not really adding a fourth and a one to both sides. You have to remember that there's that four factor on the outside. Multiply through by that, and you'll see that what you're really adding is a four times a fourth. One. 
What you're really adding is four times a one for the y's. Four. So what did you add to the left to complete those squares? A one and a four. You need to add anything for the z. What you need to add to the right then? A one and a four. And that's how the eight came in. This doesn't look like the equation above. What's different about it? There's, there's no constant multiplier in front of the perfect squares from the general equation on the top line there. So divide by four. All the ones on the left go away. Don't forget to divide the eight by four and you get a two. All right, here's the easy question. What's the radius? What's the center? Center first, let's see, x minus eight. So h is a half, but y, uh, uh, k is a negative one. And z is going to be 0. So 1 half, negative 1, 0 is your center. What about your radius? The square root of 2. All right, not bad, not bad. Okay. Good job. A little work. Got to shake off the rust. All right. Question number two. Spheres. I have a sphere with the equation that's there and another sphere with the second equation that's there. Okay. Two spheres in space. Question. Find the minimum distance from a point on the one sphere to a point on the other. It seems kind of vague. A point? What do you mean a point? So uh, it hel it's helpful to get a, a good graph. Uh, the, the tool that I'm using to get all these graphs is GeoGebra, like geometry and algebra together. GeoGebra. And there's a 3D grapher, and it's, it's great. I'll show it to you once, we, uh, once we're in uh, class time. So, so I've plotted the, uh, the first sphere in red. The second sphere is in the uh, cyan color there. How do I know which one is which? Well, it's about the radius. Who has the smaller radius? The red one does. The radius is two. What's the radius of the cyan one? It's, it's three. Okay, great. I've labeled a point inside the sphere. Of course, what's that point? It's the center. Uh, so what's the center of the red sphere? One, zero, two. What's the center of the cyan sphere? Negative two, five, negative two. All right, great. I have connected these two. Why? The question says find the minimum distance from a point on the one sphere and a point on the other sphere. So the good thing is that these two spheres don't overlap, but uh, yeah, they're, they're, they're separated. And connecting the two centers is the key to this question. How far apart are those two centers? Find the distance from A to B. Subtract the X's and square. Subtract the Y's and square. Subtract the Z's and square. What do you get? Negative 2 minus 1 is negative 3. You square it, you get a 9. 5 minus nothing, 5. Square it, 25. Negative 2 minus 2, negative 4. When you square it, 16. Okay, okay, okay. That's that's 25 and 25. That's 50. Square root of 50. But, nah, yeah, we need more, right? Nah, can't sit. That shouldn't sit right in your soul, writing square root of 50. Like the algebra class and know that you can simplify that. It's 25 times 2, so 5 root 2. That's how far apart the centers are. Okay. Well, what is this distance along the line that connects A and B? What's the distance there that's inside of the red sphere? What's that distance? How do you know? What's the radius of the red sphere? two okay so this distance inside of the cyan sphere was the radius of that guy three okay what are we looking for the minimum distance between these two spheres have to occur has to occur on that line that connects the center of these two spheres i don't have it drawn in but but the two points there they're the closest to each other okay we are looking for this distance right here. And we have everything we need. 
Let's call it D. We know the entire distance. We know these two other distances. But basically, the three of them add up to five root two. Right? Two plus D plus three better be five root two. So D then is five root two minus the two and minus the three. You did it. Five root two minus five. That's a tough question. All right. So that's the end of this first set of videos. It's the introduction to 3D. We'll come back and do more 3D for sure. But quick switch of gears. What's coming next? Introduction to vectors. And so I swear, this is called multivariable calculus. The calculus is coming, I promise. But we're kind of easing into it. All right. All right. Thanks so much for watching. My name is Nakaya Rimmer. Please uh, ask any questions if you get confused. Um, comment down below, like and subscribe, and um, I'll help you through this journey. Multivariable calculus. Calculus. It's coming. All right. See you in the next video. Take care.